how good is the Kia Sonnet? Now, I'm sure you've seen a whole bunch of first drive videos and every journalist, every serious journalist has given it the two thumbs up. We also know its prices now, so it's priced attractively. But a car is only as good as its rivals. And that's why we've got two of its main rivals. The Hyundai Venue out there, that is the reigning Indian car of the year. We also did a compact SUV comparison recently with the Nexion, XUV300, WRV and the Vitara Brezza and the Venue came out trumps. The one compact SUV that we did not have at the test is also here. All you Ford fanboys, the Ford EcoSport is here. Now, can the Sonnet beat these two compact SUVs? That's what we are here to find out. But before we proceed, a reminder to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon and stay notified for all our videos. Let's start with the EcoSport, the oldest car in this test. And the good thing about the EcoSport is that the steering, it both adjusts for reach as well as rake. So you can really get a good driving position allied to the height adjustable seat. Now, what is it that we love about the EcoSport? Or actually, what is it that gets the EcoSport so many fanboys drooling about it? That is that sense of sportiness. Where does that come from? That comes from the steering. Majorly, it comes from the steering. It has got the most feel and communication amongst all the other compact SUVs in this category. Forget the Sonnet and the Venue, but compared to everything else, the EcoSport has got the most steering feel. It is the most direct. It is the most immediate. The change of direction is the most eager, and that makes the EcoSport feel alive. Now, it might not be outright the fastest round corners, but it definitely feels fast. It feels enthusiastic. And that's why I can understand why fanboys really go gaga over the EcoSport, say that EcoSport is the sportiest car in this test. It's because of the steering, which really is very good. Now, this is the diesel engine. In fact, all three compact SUVs here are diesels. This one makes 99 bhp. So in terms of the power, it is on par with the venue, but the torque is lower than the venue. And you can feel that. So in places where you could stick the venue in fourth, you have to keep the Echo Sport in third. There is also more lower down grunt in the venue. The Sonnet is a different ball game because it's got the VGT turbo. So it's got even more torque and grunt. But compared to the venue, which is on par, similar specs, the Echo Spot is a little down on bottom end grunt, but like I said, it feels the most alive. So when you throw it around corners, you just involuntarily smile. Ford has always been known for its ride and handling DNA, and the Echo Spot, it really is a very good example of Ford's engineer's prowess in terms of ride and handling. So like I said, it grips well. The turn-in is the nicest. It is the most immediate. The front-end bite is good. And it gives you the confidence to push it. Plus, it is enthusiastic. It makes you smile. It makes you want to throw the Echo Sport around these bends. So is the Echo Sport the fastest round corners? Well, not really. The Venue and the Sonnet can carry slightly more corner speed. They've got slightly wider tires and the suspension is slightly more sophisticated than the Echo Sport. So in terms of outright speed, those two are quicker. In fact, they even lift the inside rear wheel around tighter bends. But the Echo Sport has got more steering feel. It has got more brake feel, braking Distances are the same for all, but the EcoSport's brakes are slightly more feelsome and the ride quality on the EcoSport feels more sporty. Now, there is a downside to that and that is the EcoSport is not the most comfortable in this test. In fact, it is the stiffest car in this test and you can feel all these little ripples. It's not uncomfortable, but you can feel it. The other two are plusher, but this ride setup does make the EcoSport feel sporty. So. In terms of the feeling of sportiness, the Echo Sport does definitely score. 
we have to talk about what the EcoSpot has done for India. If you cycle back a couple of years, the EcoSpot was the first compact SUV in the country. And this is the car that actually gave birth to this entire genre, which then exploded with the Brezza and now there are so many other compact SUVs. Ford were the first to conceive of an SUV within this footprint, within four meters. So you have to really give them credit. That said, the EcoSport really hasn't moved on ever since the Gen 1 EcoSport. So the downside, the ride is stiff. The cabin is the least spacious in this test. Even from the front, the EcoSport is not the most comfortable. The seats, they're not the widest. In fact, they feel the narrowest and the least comfortable. And also the width, even though on paper, it's not that much narrower than the others, but from inside the cabin, it is narrow. So if you have a passenger sitting with you, you will rub elbows all the time. Things don't feel or look very expensive. It doesn't have all the equipment as its rivals. It's got a sunroof, but that's about it. These things like, for instance, the controls for the aircon, they feel too cheap and not very sophisticated. The steering wheel, it feels good, but to hold, it doesn't feel all that premium. There's a lot of hard, shiny plastics all over the cabin. And the engine is not the most sporty. It doesn't rev as freely as the Hyundai's engine or even the Kia's engine. The gear shift though is excellent. It has got the shortest throws, the most direct feel and it feels the sportiest. Banging in the gears, it's enjoyable. You enjoy shifting gears in the EcoSport. Sticking with the gear shift, I must point out that the EcoSport only gets a 5-speed gearbox and no automatic on the diesel, whereas the Sonnet, it gets an automatic on the diesel, plus the manual is a 6-speed manual. So too with the Venue, it gets a 6-speed manual. And having that extra gear in their boxes, in the Hyundai and Kia boxes, gives it so much more flexibility, so much wider a range to play with. So why would you buy an EcoSport in this day and age, especially when the EcoSport, it doesn't really undercut its rivals? You might like its styling, that is a plus point on the EcoSport, even though it is familiar, but it does look good. You might want a car that really puts a smile on your face every time you drive it, the EcoSport does do that. So there are positives to the EcoSport and there are reasons why you would still buy an EcoSport in this day and age. But fact of the matter is that its rivals are newer, more contemporary, more sophisticated and offer a lot more value. Plus they offer a lot more features. So in that sense, the EcoSpot really does struggle a bit. The Hyundai Venue, it is our reigning Indian car of the year. And not without reason. With the Venue, things took a big step up in the compact SUV class. Not just in terms of exterior styling, because that is something that you really can make up your own mind, but mainly in terms of the interiors, in terms of the amount of equipment that you get inside the car, and also in terms of the way the car makes you feel, the premiumness of the car. So you get a sunroof, but everything else also gets a sunroof. So that's not such a big deal. But you got these telematics, you got the Hyundai Blue Link, which Ford also has its own system called Sync. You have the concierge function. You've got the app on your phone so you can start it remotely, all of that. You get a lot of engine options. What we have here with this car is the diesel. It is a 1.5 diesel made it to the six speed manual. Now the venue, it does not get an automatic with the diesel. It does get the turbo petrol engine. It does get the IMT and all of that, but it does not get an automatic with the diesel, at least not as of now. The new venue, it does get the steering wheel from the Creta, which looks and feels much nicer. There is also a sport version with all this red accenting outside as well as inside, which also looks cool and does freshen up the venue. The venue, how does it look? To my mind, it does look cool, but to a lot of people, it is a bit polarizing. But like I said, styling is a personal subject. I actually quite like the interiors, the layout of the dash, the cabin, the clocks, regular analog dials, no digital speedo business going on here, which I really like. And it all does feel very grown up, very premium feeling and not cut price. All compact SUVs up until now have felt a little bit compromised in terms of the quality, in terms of the fitments, in terms of the furnishings, all of that. The venue, it does not feel compromised. 
and that continues in terms of its dynamics. Now, the first thing that you notice when you step in from the Echo Sport to the venue is the ride. The ride is more planted, it is less jittery, less of these small bumps filter into the cabin and it feels more sophisticated. The second is the steering is not as good as the Echo Sport. The Echo Sport is more alive. The steering on the venue is a bit lifeless and dull. So that sort of filters out the enthusiasm from the chassis. But then you point the venue around a set of twisties and you notice that the venue can actually take these twisties at some serious speeds. And it takes these twisties at speed without feeling over enthusiastic, without feeling like, okay, it's on the edge and doing a lot of drama. So there is less drama, but there is a lot of cornering grip. There is a lot of bite. You can go around corners faster than the Echo Spot, but it doesn't feel as fast and it doesn't feel as involving. So that's the two different things. The Echo Spot feels involving. The venue, it is faster on bends, but doesn't feel as involving. Now, in terms of the engine, both the EcoSport and the Venue, both have got 1.5 litre diesel engines, four cylinder diesel engines, and both make 99 bhp. But the Venue, it makes 240 Newton meters of torque. The EcoSport has 215 Newton meters, and the EcoSport's torque comes in lower down the rev range. And it is definitely evident. For one, this engine is smoother, more refined, and less intrusive in terms of NVH. And the second is that the bottom end grunt is much nicer. So you can stick it in higher gear, so you keep it in fourth gear and even down these twisties, it is actually pretty all right. The gear shift on the venue, it is slicker, but it has slightly longer throws and that draws it off that ultimate feeling of sportiness that the Echo Sport does so well. The build quality of the venue is also pretty good. The only real downside in terms of the build quality is the air purifier that was stuck on here in the cup holders that has come off and now God alone knows where it has gone. So that is the only one thing in terms of build quality that we can point out. And the second is that the wireless charger, it plugs into one of the cigarette lighter ports over here and it has that wire hanging. So that is not that well finished. But otherwise, even today, over a year after the venue was launched, it still feels tight, well built, well put together and upmarket. It was a game-changing product when we gave it the Indian Car of the Year trophy and it continues to be a benchmark vehicle in this test. And finally, the Kia Sonnet. Now, this is our new long-term test car at Evo India and it is the diesel automatic of which we do not know the prices because when they launched the car they didn't announce the prices for the gtx plus variant of the diesel automatic what do i expect it to be priced at 13 13 and a half i think 13 should be around the x showroom price of this gtx plus diesel automatic what i like about it is the tons of features on the car now it's got this 10.25 inch touchscreen which is fantastic it's really huge and especially for the size of the car it is really great then it has got cool seats it also has drive modes and traction modes but honestly you don't really need that this is a front wheel drive car and it has got 113.4 bhp and 250 newton meters of torque from this 1.5 engine which has a vgt turbo so how does it drive it moves really well it is enthusiastic 0 to 100 in around 11.5 seconds it's refined it's silent there is no noise vibration harshness coming into the cabin you can hear that it is a diesel engine but it's never unrefined it is never irritating it is the pick of the sonnet range it is the most expensive also of the sonnet range and this variant will be the most expensive compact suv in the country but it is money well spent so all your money on the sonnet where all does it go the seats they look great they are very comfortable the steering wheel looks and feels excellent you get a semi digital dash so you get a digital speedo but then you got analog taco and analog dials the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge which looks okay i prefer the venue's full analog dials but this 
by the standards of digital speedometers looks actually pretty good it's got an air purifier under the armrest out here and all the modes can be worked on from the infotainment so it's got a bacteria killer it's got some uv something something so basically the air inside the sonnet is going to be very clean and free from viruses and plus it's got a perfume so that's a great thing and it is integrated in this armrest it's not hanging around in the cup holders out here like in the venue you get a normal sunroof no panoramic sunroof nothing in this class gets a panoramic sunroof and in any case i think that is overkill you get esp on the automatic gearbox and you get a compact suv that doesn't feel compromised in any which way it makes as much power as a seltos it looks and feels as good as a seltos from the inside from the outside it looks honestly fantastic especially in this black and the gt line very striking very attractive the ergonomics on the sonnet are also slightly better than the venue case in point being the tray for the wireless charger so it is well integrated there are no wires hanging and also it is done in such a way that you have the space here to throw nicks and nacks plus you have an additional tray for the wireless chargers now the handling it is on the same lines as the venue it grips well lot of front end bite good cornering grip not too much body roll the steering doesn't feel as enthusiastic doesn't feel as alive a little bit more feel and response from the steering would go a long way into making the sonnet feel sportier the ride quality is good in fact it feels slightly better than our venue but that really is down to the tires this is a brand new car brand new tires that is an over a year old car which has done a lot of miles so that tire degradation is there so this difference in the ride quality where the sonnet feels slightly better is basically down to fresh tires and that also tells you how important tires are to the dynamic ability and comfort of a car with the sonnet you get more powertrain options you get more trim options so there's the gt line which is this with all black interiors or you get the tech line which has got lighter interiors so the cabin feels a little bit more airy now in terms of spaciousness the sonnet is not as spacious as the nexon or the xuv300 it's got the same space as the venue and it is slightly more spacious than the echo sport kia claim that the boot space is the best in this segment more than the venue also but it is really very little i think some 50 60 liters more than the venue so it is only of academic interest so the cabin not the most spacious the nexon and the xuv also have better ride they have more ride sophistication and the smoother out bumps better but overall to drive the sonnet is better the balance of ride handling power trains refinement comfort cabin all of that you put it together and the sonnet it definitely feels one step up on its competition compared to the venue it feels 10 20% better but it is that 10 20% better now i am a car critic so i have to criticize something right so let's start the brakes they don't have that feel that bite that uh, you get in the echo sport braking distances are great but that feel is not that great i would have liked paddles behind the steering wheel for the automatic gearbox that would have been nice a little more feel from the steering would really go a long way into making the sonnet feel more sporty also if the ride was a little bit plusher like the nexon for instance it would be more comfortable and of course while we are there with the nexon why not some more space like in the nexon but that's about it honestly there really isn't anything else to complain about on the sonnet this is very well thought out very well engineered very well put together and styled like a dream it is set to go to the top of the compact suv class no question about it there's no point beating around the bush the kia sonnet is the new winner in the compact suv segment and how the tables have turned so when we compared the new creta to the seltos we said that the creta takes everything that we know and love about the seltos but moves it up one notch the sonnet now does the same thing to the venue so everything that we know and love about our reigning indian car of the year the sonnet moves it up one notch it looks better it has got better interiors it's got more variety in terms of the powertrain options and well let's repeat ourselves it does look fantastic now the echo sport is still a sporty compact suv so when you throw it on the hills it does put a wider smile on your face but the sonnet is got pricing on its side now we don't know what the price of this gt line is 
but the Kia Sonnet it starts at 6.7 lakh rupees and has a whole range of engine options, trim options, all the way up to what we estimate this GT line to be 13, 13.5 lakh rupees with the diesel automatic. The Kia Sonnet it gets the interiors right, the exteriors right, the pricing right. In fact, it ticks all the right boxes and it is the new winner in the compact SUV segment. Subscribe to the Evo India channel and hit the bell icon to keep pace with the thrill of driving.